All right, this is Julie Pearson Little Thunder with the Oklahoma Oral History Research Program at Oklahoma State University. Today is March 13th, 2021, and this is a remote interview with Angelica Suka for the Library of Congress's Occupational Folklife Project, funded by the Archie Green Fellowship. I'm in Tulsa, and Angelica, you're in Oklahoma City where you're a multimedia artist working in painting, photography, and printmaking. I'm looking forward to learning more about you and your work. Where were you born and where did you grow up? So I was born in, um, in a small city in Poland and uh, I grew up actually there um, with my family. Um, and um, when I was 15, I moved to the other city to uh, start my uh, art school. And What's it in Krakow, excuse me. Uh, so it was in uh, Nowy Wisnicz, and okay. this is the city like close to the Krakow. And um, after high school, I was studying in Krakow. So it sounds like you were interested in art early on, very early in your life. Uh, yes, uh, like were you I was, interested in art? Like, um, uh, <laughs> so I wasn't uh, doing art before I started high school. So it was the first time when I started to do art. Um, and uh, but I was interested in because my mom was amateur uh, painter and uh, my big sister was also attending to the art high school and it was kind of like mm, because of them <laughs> so they were they were an inspiration yeah. um, yes I was going to ask what your mother and father did for a living so um, um, my mom uh, is a nurse. Um, so what was your first um, art experience maybe in high school or earlier that made you think you might want to explore art? Was it seeing your mom's paintings or what was your first sort of attraction? Mm -hmm. So uh, I think um, first thing was actually in high school um, when I met everything like different uh, subjects, uh, like different mediums. Uh, and I think the um, photography was the um, like most important to me in that time. And it developed me to uh, like to studying uh, the, sorry, to study um, graphic design and printmaking. Yeah. What did you like about photography? Uh, I like the play with uh, with the lights, like with the lights and shadow, and uh, I like to photograph a uh, human body. So uh, it was like interested to me, like. Um, with the photography, like you can um, express yourself and show the human body in a different way, like some kind of the abstract way. So um, I very like like abstract art, and uh, I I love to use this in also in photography. Like um, I don't like to photograph the portraits or something like this. I like the uh, whole body and um, show it in the abstract way so yeah yes I, I love your photographs they're really interesting Thank you so when you got to college what did you study exactly um so um, i did like a double degree and uh, so i studied uh, painting it was like i studied for uh, five years uh, painting and I had there uh, like different media, uh, different subject, different courses like the photography, illustration, um, painting, drawing uh, and even more. 
Uh, and in the same time, I uh, was studying uh, printmaking and graphic design. It was like, mm, like together. Um, and uh, I, I did like the, uh, I finished this one in a bachelor degree. So it was like for three years. A very, very deep uh, background in all those media. And you got your master's degree also there. Yes. You specialized in printmaking. Why did you decide on that? Okay, so um, I uh, like kind of, if I can say that, like I felt in love in uh, lithography. Like it was the first uh, printmaking technique that I learned. And uh, it was something that uh, I liked and I like still. So um, this was the first printmaking technique. technique and um, I also did the, my uh, diploma there in a, in a, a print, uh, sorry, in a lithography um, studio at the university mm. and uh, I feel like this project was uh, the best one if I can say that <laughs> so uh -huh. yeah I like it very much so can you explain a little bit what lithography is for us just the okay. simplest okay so um, lithography is the printmaking technique that um, for the matrix, you use the flat stone, and this uh, technique is a flat technique, which means that you don't have on your matrix any um, difference differences between the high, like on the surrounding, um, and uh, there you need to use the acid. Uh, to um, change the environment on the stone to print uh, from the stone. So, okay. this, yeah, I think this was the simplest way that I could uh, explain this. <laughs> Good job. Um, how did you end up in Oklahoma? Um, I moved here with my husband, like, he got internship here and uh, we moved together. Um, he's a biotechnologist and uh, yeah, <laughs> that's why. <laughs> so, <laughs> What were your first impressions of Oklahoma when you got here? Um, so the first impression was where people actually um, because uh, everyone is uh, really kind and uh, here is like the hospitality and I feel I feel very very good here um, I hear a lot of like compliments on the streets like oh I like your glasses I like your shoes or something like <laughs> this so this was uh, pretty different um, so yeah it, it was this <laughs> Um, how about your first impressions of the Oklahoma art scene? What were they? Okay, uh, so uh, I uh, started from Pasio, and so this was the first place uh, where, where I was uh, seeing art here. And, and I'm going to just add that Paseo is one of the um, like shopping areas in Oklahoma City. Mm -hmm. Art district, arts district. Okay, so um, uh, I noticed that uh, Oklahoma art is um, different uh, because here uh, Oklahoma artists use a, use a, a lot of colors. Like uh, so, um, it was like. Um, Sorry, it was different, and uh, yeah, I, no I noticed that um, also Oklahoma artists uh, use the topics like 
um, connected to the uh, to the United States, to the country, to the uh, Oklahoma, to the city, and um, it was also like that I noticed. So, so really, sort of specific themes that were locally yes. local local themes, sort of. How did you get involved with the residency at Untitled? You have a residency there. So um, I was looking for something uh, for me to do here because uh, on the beginning I couldn't work or I couldn't even drive. <laughs> so I applied for uh, um, every documents I needed. And I during that I was waiting, uh, I started looking for something else. And I um, found this on the internet, the opportunity to apply there. And I applied and then I got this. <laughs> so it was pretty like I applied and uh, they chose me. So um, and I started there in uh, January 2020 um, and uh, I learned there like a lot like I'll, I learned um, how to uh, do screen printing uh, like I have never do this before done this before so this was like the first time and uh, I did my all pro my whole project um, in this printmaking technique what were the requirements um, for the residency? What are the what are the kind of the um, rules that you have to? Are you free to do whatever you want, or how does it work? Mm, so it was uh, I needed to do a like set of prints uh, that was. For, and I needed to share them with art space. So it was like 40 prints, prints and uh, 20 was for me and 20 for there. I see. Yeah. And um, I did something different because I could do everything what I wanted. And uh, I uh, have created um, prints from the same two matrix matrices. Uh, but um, each print was in different colors. So it was the set from the different colors printed from the same matrix. So it, it was something uh, unusual here because uh, usually uh, artists in residence here uh, should like should do the um, prints from the same color, like the same um, set of prints. I see. For screen painting, most people do the same color all the way through. Uh, yes. Yes, and the uh, requirement uh, to, the, to the set is to print in the same color, but like uh, I was talking with, uh, with Laura and she said that my idea is also okay so i can i can change the rules and i can do this so cool yes i've seen pictures of that series do you what do you like about working in a series so i like like my idea like i always have some idea on the beginning and i do sketches and I like the series because I like like my idea um, uh, develops. So mm -hmm. this is that's why I do series because <laughs> I have something and then I want to do like more of this and continue uh, this uh, this first idea. So that's why continue exploring. Uh, is that also true of your photography and your painting, or are they more are they more independent units when you create them? In photography, I also um, like to do series, mm -hmm. uh, and 
this is also um, because um, I like to have my project um, done in the way that I could display it uh, in the gallery as my own exhibit. So, yeah. It, With it's a certain kind of, number of paint, a certain number of photographs or... Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I love your photographs. And like you said, you know, you take um, often it's a, an angle, uh, a nude body shot at a certain angle that makes it look very abstract posed in these unusual poses. And a lot of times I notice you sort of focus on hands, people's hands. And I wonder what's interesting to you about hands. So it, um, I have created this, like I created this project because this is like the, also the project that I created. And um, this one was created for the exhibition. Mm -hmm. um, and it was the uh, theme uh, gestures. I'm not sure if this is the word. Like the, like what do you can do with your hand? Like the- Gestures, yes. Gestures, oh, thank you so yes, much. Yes, you are right, yeah. Yeah, so oh. uh, it was um, something that inspired me, like what kind of jest you can do and mm -hmm. what this express. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, in one of your artist statements, you talk about emotion being the source of a lot of your imagery. What are some ways that you try to make sure the viewer feels um, an emotion, a strong emotion when they're looking at your work? So, um, like in my in my art, um, I want to like maybe I I don't know if this is the word, but maybe make people to uh, see what I am like inside me. Like I want them to feel what I feel. So um, and uh, those emotions. Uh, in my arts are uh, inspired by my past and my uh, future also like what I think about something or something like this uh, and uh, about the present so this is always something from my life like yeah I think about the topic and uh, I think about what how this um, is um, like connected with me. Mm -hmm. Cool. You've also done illustrations. I, I really like your illustrations. They feel completely different. They're more like whimsical. And I wondered, um, more light you know, in feeling. I wondered what projects you have done illustrations for. Uh, like, what do you mean? What kind of illustration? Um, well, on they're, on, they're on your website, yes. Okay, so, because I have like few there. I have uh, illustrations um, like for the book I did, and I have also like the illustrations um, like the person inside uh, the room or something like this. I don't, I'm not sure uh, what uh, you are talking about. about so it. you did a book? Like um, it was uh, the university project. So it wasn't like published or anything. Uh, it was book about uh, Buddhism. And uh, I created like I illustrated uh, those illustrations and I created all book like I set up this in InDesign uh, application so they're they're great I think you should do more <laughs> so when the pandemic um, started in 2020 you shared with me that um, a few months into the shutdown you took advantage of that 
to really uh, work on your English. How did you go about that? Okay, so um, I can say that my English was uh, very bad uh, on the beginning when I moved here. Um, like I had English at school, but it was different here, uh, the different accent uh, and people also um, talk pretty fast. Um, and I was like, okay, I cannot understand anything. So I started um, studying and uh, my husband helped me because um, his English is very good. So he, um, he helped me with grammar and actually helped me like study. We were uh, like reading together. I was reading out loud. He was correcting me. And actually this was the uh, best way to improve my English, like to read out loud. And uh, like after the pandemic, I like, yeah, we have still pandemic, but after the first lockdown we had here in Oklahoma City, um, I uh, was back in in the art space or in um, in my work and I was more comfortable to speak to people. So right, that it helped you me made, a lot. <laughs> you took good advantage of, of that time. What's been the reception for your work so far? How have people taken to your work so far? Or like, what do you mean? Um, maybe some compliments that you've gotten on your work or some reactions that you've gotten to your work? Yeah, so um, I heard uh, that my art, like from the website, um, this is and mostly the lithography that this is pretty uh, dark art and what I have inside that I did something like this. Um, but beside this, I heard um, pretty like good comments about my art. Like people like it. Uh, mostly the this uh, colorful project from art space from the uh, my residency. Like I had exhibition here at the art space and uh, a lot of people uh, was was there to to see this and uh, I heard that this was good, good one. So yeah, <laughs> mostly like the positive comments. And I, I like your black and whites personally. I think they're very dramatic and very, um, very emotional. Thank you. So what ties or are there any ties that you have with the, there's a Polish American community, of course, in Oklahoma, like everywhere else. I don't know if you've met people from that community. What, what ties do you have? Uh, so I have met uh, some people, some Polish people here in Oklahoma city uh, and, uh, they are mostly people from the internship that my husband is on. So they are like uh, scientists mostly. And mm -hmm. like we hang out sometimes, maybe not now because of the pandemic, but before the pandemic, we uh, were meeting like um, uh, oh, I forgot the word. Pretty regularly. Yeah. yeah yes, yeah. this is the word. <laughs> Thank you. Um, how much? How much have you networked with other immigrant women artists? Okay, so uh, I think I don't have like any. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, like. Um, I know artists from uh, from art space, from my work in uh, Oklahoma Contemporary Art Center. So there is a few artists, uh, but um, I don't know any immigrants artists mm -hmm. here. Immigrant artists here. How imp how important are galleries to you right now in marketing your work? How important are they? 
mm, like the mm, I don't I don't know like galleries are you using galleries art galleries very much or are you mostly working at art space yeah so i mostly work in art space like i'm uh, a member now there so um mm -hmm. uh, i can use a studio like anytime i need so i mostly work there mm. is it a cooperative angelica is it a co-op where people take turns running it or like, do, do the artists take turns working at art space to keep it running mm, or is I, it i don't i don't okay. actually understand what do you mean yeah like, that that's all right i imagine it's either the artists who work who run the space or it has a manager it has a gallery owner oh yeah yeah so uh there there is uh like artists uh, that lead the classes there because there are classes for students or open um, art studios. Mm, some some artists also lead classes like the art member artists. So for example, I could lead the class there, uh, but I don't know. I don't feel like I want to <laughs> so go there yet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like I for now I just want to use the space to create my own art mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you had at least one opening during the pandemic right or I saw you kind of in front of your work with a mask I don't know oh yeah so it was um, it was in uh, December and uh -huh. This this is the project that I have created for um, artists in, the, in residence. So this is the project, and I had the um, exhibit there with the color. Yeah, series. Yeah. You're also an artist in residence at Christ High School Academy in Oklahoma City. When did you start that? When did you start that? Yeah. So I also start in. Um, January 2020 uh -huh. uh, and I was teaching uh, photography there for a few months and it was like after class uh, classes and uh, now I'm back there because like I had a break uh, there and now I'm back there and uh, I teach um, media art in high school and, but you're teaching virtually correct uh, yes like um i was teaching uh virtually and now we have like hybrid okay uh so we have a uh, few um, hours in school and a uh, few uh online what were the challenges of teaching photography virtually what were the um, challenges? What was hard about it? So it was um, mostly to keep students attending to to this <laughs> uh, course, and um, yeah, and and actually, like also the teaching with, um, via Zoom, it was it was hard mm -hmm. because we couldn't like use the studio, we couldn't take a photo like together in the class like it was yeah it was hard i was mm -hmm. mostly uh saying about um uh like uh, um, about theory uh, right so they needed to to do practice like by themselves so right you were talking about theory and yeah yeah letting them practice. What's been the um, hardest art project you've done since you got to Oklahoma, the hardest one? Um, I don't know, like, um, <laughs> um, I think, um, hmm. 
like if I need uh, have to compare to uh, my uh, being in Poland and so there I did the hardest project that I think ever <laughs> so uh, yeah nothing was that hard here for now <laughs> And what what one was that again? Was that it the, was uh, it was the, my uh, lithography lithography mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. it was hard because I was printed on the uh, large fabric and it was like ten uh, ten uh, meters so it was very large and it was very hard to um, keep it clean on the press and everything so mm -hmm. <laughs> you had your hard stuff behind you. Um, well, what's been a highlight of your uh, artwork here in Oklahoma so far? What's been a high point? So I think uh, the uh, the time that I was uh, in um, in the artist in residency program, it was the very good time, and I think it was the one uh, step to like. To me, to open to to art here and to the people. So this one. And how about like a really low point? A oh, difficult, okay. a difficult time here. So the the low point. So I I think that time to time I have the low points um, for a some time uh, because like I don't have any ideas or um, I, I'm i sad or something like this so I don't want to create anything and um, I think this is because I miss my family and uh, friends mm -hmm. so sometimes I feel like um, pretty bad and I don't mm -hmm. want to do anything yeah but nothing like um, like specific so i can mm -hmm, say mm -hmm. how often do you communicate with your family and friends oh, so every day oh. like i talk <laughs> with my uh, sisters we have like the um, online chat together and we like uh, text every day <laughs> <laughs> that's great um i understand you and your husband are moving to montreal in july how did that come about and um, what are you looking forward to? Okay, so we are moving to Montreal in September, but oh, September. in July we're moving from here. Uh, we're going to Poland for a summer and in September we're moving to Montreal. Okay. Mm, and I would like to uh, develop my career as an artist there mm -hmm. and also I would like to um, develop my uh, graphic design skills and work in the graphic design industry like I would like to uh, design websites okay yeah well that'll it's a wonderful city I know you'll in, enjoy it there. Yeah, I I, um, I really like the, that we are going to move to Montreal uh, because this is like most more European city. So mm -hmm. this is pretty, pretty good. <laughs> yes, you hear a lot of languages up there and it's wonderful. All the all the different peoples that live up there. Is there anything we forgot to talk about or anything you'd like to add about your art journey so far? Mm, sure, like, I think um, I said mostly everything. Uh, like, I look forward to move to Montreal and uh, I will have a good memories from Oklahoma City and like I'm very glad that uh, we end up here because it is it was good experience and it still is so <laughs> well I'm glad I'm glad to hear that um, thank you for your time today Angelica and I look forward to keeping track of your future creations 
Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me for this interview. I enjoyed it.